And now we're going to organize everything by the largest number. So write that down. So the largest number. And we know what the largest numbers can be. They can be 6, 5, 4, or 3. Those are the only possibilities. We can't have 2 be the largest because then the highest you can roll is 2 plus 2 plus 2. 6. 6. Still less than 9. So we can't have anything other than 6, 5, 4, or 3. So let's start with 6. And let's look at the possibilities that add up to 9. Well, 6 is one die. The next die can't be 6, 5, 4, or 3. And look, we're still staying organized. We're going from the largest to the second largest. The second largest can be 2. And then the last number would just be 1. 6 plus 2 plus 1 is 9. And we can't have 6 and then 1 be the second largest, because then the highest we can get is 6 plus 1 plus 1, which is 8. So 6, 2, 1 is the only possibility that has the largest number as 6. However, there's more than one way we can get a 6, 2, and a 1. We have 6 on the green die, 2 on the white, and then, let's see, 1 on the black. But we also could have had a 6 on the black and the 1 on the green, or 6 on the white, and so on. So we have to count the number of different ways we can come up with 6, 2, 1. Fortunately, that's not too hard. First, we choose which die gets the 6. There are three ways to choose that, because I have three dice. So say we choose this one. What we're doing here is counting the number of ways to do this. We have three for the first die. And then once we've chosen one die to be the 6, we have two choices left to get the 2. And then the last die has to be the 1. So there are 3 times 2 times 1, and that's six ways to roll a 6, 2, 1. And now we're ready to move on to 5. Once again, we start with one die is 5. What could the second largest roll be? Well, we could get a 3 as the second roll. We can't go 5, 4, because then there's nothing left we can do in the last die. If we go 5 and 3, then the last roll has to be a 1, not a 2. 5 plus 3 plus 2, still 10. So 5, 3, 1, just like there were six ways to do 6, 2, 1, there are six ways to do 5, 3, 1, so there are six possibilities there. But now with 5, we have to remember there's another second highest roll we could get. 5 and then a 2. And then the last roll would also be a 2. And this is, this is why it's a very good idea to stay nice and organized. Largest die, second largest. Second largest was 3. We go down 1, see if that works, 2. That does work, 5, 2, 2. But there are only three ways to get 5, 2, and 2. We just have three ways to choose which die gets the 5, and then the other two have to be 2s. So here we only have three ways to roll a 5, 2, and a 2. And then there are no more possibilities to start with 5. This next one will be 5, 1. Best you can do there is 5, 1, 1, and that adds up to 7. So on to 4. And we could have 4 be the second largest roll. That would be tied with the largest. And then the last die would have to be a 1. And there are three ways to do this. Again, we just have three ways to choose which die gets the 1. And then we can also go 4, 3, 2. And just like there were six ways to do 5, 3, 1 when the numbers are all different, six ways to do 6, 2, 1, there are six ways to do 4, 3, and 2. We have three ways to choose the 4. Two dice left that could be the three, and then just one left that could be the two. Three times two times one, that's six. And we can't go four and then two, because then the last die would have to be a three. We've already got that here, and two wouldn't be the second largest number. So now we're down to our last case. Three, three, three. And there's just one of those. So now we have here on our board, we see that for certain, we have counted everything absolutely everything, once. Got every possibility, every possible first number, every possible second number for each of those first numbers. And we've counted the number of ways to do each one of these in a nice, organized way. And we know that we've got everything only once. We don't see anything on this list twice. Nice, organized list. We can see very quickly nothing's on here twice. We've got everything once and only once. So we can just add them all up. 1 plus 6 plus 3, that's 10, plus 3 plus 6, that's 19, plus 6 more, that's 25. So we add them all up. We write down our 25, write that down on our test, and we are 
wrong. What happened? We have to read the question at the end. Have to make sure you read the question and answer what's asked for. So go ahead, read the question. There should be a button. I can't quite see it. Maybe it's there. Maybe it's there. Maybe it's up there. It says show problem. Click on it. Read it. See what we missed. One word. One word I'm looking for here. Probability. The problem asked for the probability that we roll a nine. All we did here was count the number of ways we can roll a nine. So to get the probability, we have to take the number of ways we can roll a nine and then divide by the total number of different rolls we can get. Fortunately, that's pretty easy to do. We have six possible rolls for each die. So to get the total number of rolls, it's just six times six times six. Now we're not going to multiply that up here because you have to know your cubes. Six times six times six is six cubed. You should get pretty comfortable with your cubes up to 10. If you know Pascal's triangle, you can find 11 cubed there. And if you know your math history, a little bit of a Hardy and Ramanujan, you might be able to remember 12 as well. Six cubed, it's 216, gotta know that one. And our probability is 25 over 216. And I'll see you at Nationals.